Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our dancing. You are worthy of us looking and acting like fools. For the sake of how glorious you are. There is no shame here. We are family, right? So let's praise our Father as though he is the best Father ever. The absolute best Father ever. He is so worthy. He is so kind and loving and merciful. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has victory. Victory over all things. When you think you can't fight anymore, let him fight it for you. Because you can't. Sometimes, sometimes we don't have the strength, right? Sometimes we do have more than we can handle, but we never have more than he can handle. Period. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
speak life. We speak life into the church, Lord. Wake them up. Eyes be open. Lives be healed. Thank you, Jesus.
We need more of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, run free. Jesus, Jesus.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Shout Jesus. To you are 
Praise your name. Hallelujah. Just continue to press in, church. Just continue to press in. Thank you, God. We don't want to miss anything you're doing, Lord. Thank you for your healing presence here right now. Hallelujah. Just press in right now, church. Oh, we worship you, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, press in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Jesus. 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 Oh, worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Rondo do boshin da da ba ba si da da da. Thank you, God. Ramba ba shin do 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 boso do boshi. Hallelujah. Stay in that attitude of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just sense an oil that is healing hearts right now in this room. The Lord has been speaking that some people's hearts have been wounded for a season. It, it isn't just something that's been recent. It's been a season of wound. And the oil in the presence of the Lord is now comforting your heart and restoring your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't miss it when the oil is, is pouring out from the Holy Spirit. Don't miss it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on.
Give the Lord a shout on this place. Hallelujah. One more time. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. Jesus. Jesus. There is joy in this place. Give a big hug. Somebody got a word over here. This young man. Kyle, come on up here, brother. What God put on your heart, young man? Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my goodness. Well, if you can, sit down. Give your neighbor a big hug. Welcome him into the house of the Lord. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Isn't it amazing what God is doing? This is our second week in this new space. This has three times more chairs than the old location. It's amazing what God has done here. Can we give them praise? All glory to the Lord. All glory to the Lord. How many of you are visiting for the first time here tonight? Just lift up your hand. Wow. Praise God. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I want to meet you if I can before we leave. At least shake your hand. Uh, I have a couple of announcements, and then I'm going to invite James to come on up here. But we have an app. I don't have it up on, on there, I don't think. Oh, maybe we do. Uh, yeah, so there's the app. So uh, iPhone, you could just go right to the app store, and it's Todd Coconado Ministries. Uh, you'll see a little red R just like that. If you download that, this is what's cool about it. The, about a week or so ago, uh, social media went out. And we were able to still contact uh, folks. And, you know, I, I know that's, like, not a big deal. But the thing is, is that who knows what's coming down the pike. And we built this thing so that it is a way of communication. And uh, we were able to get a broadcast up there within a short period of time. So if you're able, if you're watching online, thank you. I know some of you are already watching on the app. We want to welcome you. Thank you for being forerunners and being on there. We have several thousand people that have downloaded it, but please, if you haven't, you can go to your app store. It's on the Android. It's also on Roku TV, which is really cool. So you can go to your smart TV and actually play it right there. But we'd rather if you be here. So if you can physically get here, please come. But if you're in another state, we have many remnant family members all around the nation. We want to welcome those that are in Westminster tonight. Can we give Westminster a welcome? And up there in Oklahoma, let's give Oklahoma remnant a welcome. Praise God. Praise God. Um, also, we have a newsletter. So if you're not an app type person, uh, if you go to the website, Pastor Todd, T-O-D-D dot org, very simple, there is a way that you can sign up for a newsletter. And that's another way if social media were to censor or who knows what, uh, we can send an email and just keep in touch as well. And next week, by the way, this is important, we're not going to have, it breaks my heart because I want to have a Friday but we're not because the other building, uh, they're using the space. So Sunday, everybody's always saying, when are you going to have a Sunday? So we're testing next week. Make sure you write on your calendar at 6 p.m. on Resurrection Day. We're going to gather here. So not Friday, but Sunday. So everybody, how many people have been asking me about Sunday in this place? A lot of you, yeah, 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 yeah. And online, a lot of people. So this is a, a way to prove yourselves, like, yes, we'll come on Sunday. Come out Sunday, please. It's a test run, but it gives us an opportunity to worship together on Resurrection Day, which I think is pretty important, right? Bring friends. Now, here's what's going to be cool about this, okay? It's a little bit different. So we're doing 20 cities around the country. The inaugural one is in Austin. We have 800 people signed up in Austin. It's a sign and a wonder. We're doing it in San Marcos, which is about 30 minutes outside of Austin. And we're having a night of healing and miracles, and we're just going to let the Lord move there. And so that's the first one, but we're going to do 20 more cities. We're going to go to Knoxville. We're going to go to Long Island, New York. Uh, let me think. Where else are we going? A uh, bunch of places. Uh, North Carolina, Charlotte. Um, we have a bunch of cities that are going to be lined up. So if you come Sunday, you're going to see what we do when we go to, because we bring a team with us, what we actually do. So we're, we're actually testing. How many think we need to do this in Nashville first, right? So it's a vision that the Lord has given us, and I'll explain a little bit more in the, in the sermon tonight. But, but 
we're going to have our first one really in Austin, but actually our test beta test here. So even though we've been doing these for the past couple of years, uh, now the Lord has given us a mandate. He, he gave me a three-year vision, which I'm extremely excited about, and I'll tell you why. It means that we're not going to, like, you know, die in three years. <laughs> we're going to be here still. So I was excited when the Lord gave me a clear vision for three years out. I said, well, praise God, we're going to be here for three years. So I don't know how it's going to work, but I know three years he gave me a vision. So how many are excited about that? So we're, we're going to go out strong, praise God. And by the way, I don't think that we're just going to have three more years. But I'm just saying, and today you watch the news and you, you, sometimes you wonder, right? But we are going to occupy until he comes. How many can say amen to that? He's with us until the end of the age. We're not going to go bunker somewhere, although I'm not against preppers. But we are going to occupy. We are going to go and make disciples of the nations. That is the Great Commission. And we want. there's a lot of places where they say the fire of God is, you know, no, I've looked around. I can't believe this, but I'm telling you, we've gone all over the country the last couple of years. And people will come to me all the time. I just asked Mario the other day. I said, does this happen to you? He said, absolutely. Talk to Lance, same thing. People say, I can't find an on-fire church in my community. Th this is a real problem. And so God said, you need to go out. And, and so this is an equipping. And so if you feel led to come with us, just come up to us and tell us. We want to go to some of these cities. Everybody here is welcome to come. We're not competing. How many know there's not, it's not competition in the body of Christ? We're one body. And, and there are so many hungry people out there that, that are unchurched right now. How many know that? And they've been hurt in the church or they've tried 10 different churches in their city and they haven't found a home. And that, those are the people we're going for is the unchurched. Amen? And so 20 cities and we're going to have our first official one really here next week. So we're going we're gonna to promote it. It's going to be powerful. There's going to be a lot of people that come invite people that you know that are unchurched. It's, I used to be an Easter Christian, okay? How many know what I'm talking about? Back in the day, okay, my parents couldn't get me to come to church, but when they could get me to come was Easter and Christmas. How many know people like that? So there's a lot of people. You'd be surprised. and You just tell them, look, I know you probably have a bad view of this or that, but will you just try? Will you just come? Will you just come to this church? I'm telling you, God is moving there. And you get them out here, and I'm telling you, the Lord and the Holy Spirit moves. And we're going to believe for a great harvest next week. How many will agree with that this week? Will you agree? Yeah. So invite people. So how many know not Friday, just next week. That's the only time this is ever going to happen. We were going to have it back at the RRC, but we said, you know, we're not going to be able to fit. So then we thought about it. We prayed about it. And we said, why don't we test the Sunday since everybody's been telling us Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Let's test it on Resurrection Day. I'm not saying we're going to go to Sundays, but at some point we may have Friday and Sunday, Okay. But it's going to be determinative. Let's see what happens, okay? So come on out. How many are you going to commit to coming out next week? All right. Praise God. Take their names right now. Get them done. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many are you going to commit to trying to bring somebody with you if you can? Okay. Praise God. All right. I'm, I'm expecting. Will you just pray and agree with me right now? We're expecting that we're going to have to put out seats next week. Will you pray? In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that on Resurrection Sunday at 6 p.m., that there would be a harvest that would happen in Hendersonville, that the areas around here, that people would come in the droves, and that every seat in this place, we'd have to put out seats, and I pray the altars would be full of salvations. I pray prodigals would come home in the name of Jesus. I pray that even parents in this room that have been praying for their kids, that their kids would come and get saved, set free, healed, and delivered in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. You hear our prayers. And we just come into agreement with that prayer right now. Everybody in this room comes in agreement. A great harvest of souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we having service next Friday? When are we having it? What time? Okay, praise God. I'm going to put it out. Now, if you have the newsletter and the app, you will get a notification. So that's why we say, you know, we're going to put it out on all fronts, but there will still be people that come here Friday. How many know that? So we'll, we'll make sure to have some people here just in case. But, okay, men's meeting. Where's my brother Mike at? Where you at, Mike? Come on up, my friend. Let's welcome Mike up. How many remnant men do we have in the house? Come on, let's hear it. First off, I want to give honor to Pastor Todd because he's allowed us, by his example, to speak boldly and to touch the issues that men are, t are talking about. And so our next meeting is tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, at the RRC in Gallatin. Do not come here. 
I will not have coffee and donuts here for you. But we will have it in Gallatin at the RRC. Come expecting. Uh, we're looking for a time that we can, we'll, we'll share in a little bit of uh, sweets, some good stuff. It's from Best Donuts, and they are the best donuts, I'll just tell you. And we're going to have a time of prayer. We're going to have a time of uh, discussion. And just come with an open heart. God's been doing some mighty things. And we're able to bind together as men in this church. And we're looking forward to more of that. So praise God. All right. Praise God. Now, when he says men of the remnant, we need to go, hey, like a deep. Let's, let's just test this. Men, where are you at? Yeah. Come on. We're remnant men. Remnant men. Remnant men are manly men, right? Come on. There's no, how many, there's no soy boys in here, right? Okay, let's try it one more time. Remnant men. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Mike. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lisa, can you come on up I, if you're in the room? I'm going to just have everybody come up just in case they never met you. Let's give Lisa a big hand as she comes on up. Good evening. We're having our next ladies' women's meeting um, April 6th, which is Saturday at 10, also at the RRC in Gallatin. I want to thank Pastor Lorraine that gave us such a wonderful teaching last month. It was excellent. It was excellent. Thank you, Lord. So just show up on April 6th, and we'll see who's teaching. It'll probably be me, but that's okay. So you can be praying for me in the meantime. Lord, truly give me a message, and I feel like he already has, but, you know, you just, you know, we just need to be praying and ladies come ready to be ministered to and minister to one another. That's what we want. We want to be built up that we can pray for one another, and then we'll go out into the community and do the same thing, lay hands on folks. Hallelujah. All right, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right. We got we to do a woman thing now. Women, where are you at? Okay, now, wait a minute. Now, this is, this is a competition now. This is a competition. Men, where are you at? <laughs> Women? <laughs> Men? <laughs> Women? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's pretty even right here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. You guys, have you practiced this before? Have you seen, okay. It's very good. Okay, well, praise God. Uh, my wife, I'm going to invite my beautiful wife to come on up here. Let's invite Michelle to come on up. Good to see you. Um, why don't you tell them about volunteers? Okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone for being here, and good evening, and everyone that's joining us online. There's a few cameras, so I don't know where we're at. But, um, Yes, I am Pastor Todd's wife, Michelle, for the ones that haven't met us. And I just want to let you know, there's a lot of new faces in here, but this is only our second week as well. And we just want to make sure that we can greet you guys. So we do want to stay after and pray for each need, but don't feel like, please come forward. Um, we would love to shake your hand just to get to know your name um, and yep. see a face. Yep. Um, but there are some needs as we have a larger building. We just need more hands, eyes, help. Um, so if you feel it on your heart or the Lord has put it on your heart to help in certain needs, um, anywhere from cleaning to helping with PowerPoint to helping with children, um, anything that the Lord has just put on your heart, please see myself, there's Debbie, there's Karen in the back. Um, they can definitely get your phone number, and we'll be in contact. So right. that's all I have. Praise God. <laughs> Give her a hand. Thank you. So with the volunteers, let me just say this. Um, somebody said, uh, you know, online, they're like, why don't you have church every night? I'd like to. I'd like to have my, some of my friends have church every night, you know. We're, when you're in revival, you could have church every night. Why not, right? Here's the thing that's stopping us right now. We need volunteers. So if we start getting more and more volunteers, guess what we're going to do? We're going to layer on more nights. Is, is anybody excited about that? Let me tell you something. I'm telling you right now, God wants to move in this time in the earth, okay? And there are people that will come on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, but we need volunteers. So just so you understand what stops us from this at this point, we're walking out in faith. Coming here was a big leap of faith, huge leap of faith. We went from a building probably about the size of this midsection, not even that, to now having this big space. So this was a huge 
leap of faith, but the Lord said, do it. And he said, now is the time. And he is, I'm just honored and humbled by what he's doing. It's all him. Okay. But the next step would be to, to have something going on. And part of the vision of the RRC is to have workshops, classes, deliverance, uh, different nights, prayer, Every single night, uh, celebrate recovery type of meeting where people are coming off of addiction, uh, marriage night, you know, where there's somebody that's going to be teaching about, your, you know, better marriages in Christ. How I many you know we need that in the church? Um, there, every, we can have something every single night because the hour is extremely late. And there's so many people that are hungry, but we do need volunteers. So please see my wife or Debbie. Debbie, raise your hand again in the back. There's Debbie. There's Karen right there at the door. If you see one of them, if you want to help with anything, the biggest need right now is the children's church. And what we do, just so you know, we don't just throw somebody in there. We do a full background check and everything. But I know some of you have worked with kids. Even if it's just one time a month as a helper, anything can help. So will you please pray about that? Because the, the, the key is we don't want to have the same people out there kind of stuck out there. Not that they're stuck. I mean, but we really believe in our kids here. Did you just see how Kyle came up and gave a word? We don't want to have a babysitting service. We want the kids to have the fire going on out there, just like the fire's going on in here. Amen? Yeah. So please keep them in prayer, and also if you can help, we'd really appreciate it. Okay. Um, I mentioned the Texas event. I uh, mentioned the vision. We do do a weekly broadcast on Sunday right now that does go live all around the world, and thank you for those of you that have helped support that. It goes out to a bunch of different TV channels and we do two weekly radio shows, in case you guys didn't know, so that's why my voice is hoarse a lot of the time. <laughs> so uh, a lot of things going on. We go live on Facebook on this service. How many have a Facebook account in here? Just out of show of hands. Yeah, a lot of you. So uh, we are live on there right now. You can help us by sharing it. Uh, we do go live on YouTube, by the way, as well. And we also go live on Rumble, and we go live on the app. But my preference would be everybody be on the app. But if you are on any of those sites, you will see other Remnant Warriors tuning in, from all around the nation. It's amazing what God is doing and the world. I mean, we have people right now watching from Israel, from New Zealand, all over the world. So praise God for what he's doing. Amen. Yeah. All right. I'm going to invite my friend James to come on up. Let's give James a hand. All right. Since we're all warriors together, I want to hear everybody together. I'm not separating men and women because there are warriors and all warriors I see in front of us. How many warriors are in the house tonight? I love it because you know what happens when we let a sound come out from here? It backs the enemy up. He knows not to come here. He's not welcome. And if he is, will he'll deliver him and set him free too. So what the Lord was saying to me was, to talk about tithe and offering this week, was there was a speech that an Olympic hockey coach gave, Herb Brooks. And he said, great moments come from great opportunity. We, every week, have a great opportunity in tithing and offering because we are thanking God. Thanking God for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he is about to do in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. It's about trust. It's about trusting in him. It's a trust fund. Listen to where we're going. It's a trust fund. So if we can put money aside for our families in a trust fund, how better is it that we put a trust fund for God who gives us the greatest return? Is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is our return if we put into a trust? We trust in him. So we like cheerful givers, right? We spoke about that last week. We want cheerful givers and not fearful givers. But we give cheerfully that we should not lack, that if we tithe and give offering, he promises to give us sevenfold back. Amen? Amen? So, in your faithfulness, just remember it is a trust thing. And remember this word because it's true. Just trust in him the way he trusts in you. God bless. Well, we thank you, Father. We thank you for our cheerful givers. We thank you for our remnant warriors. We thank you, Father God, that today we put into your trust fund, that we trust in you and only you. Father God, for you are good and all good things come from you. For you said 
that you would open the windows of heaven for us. And we thank you, Lord, that each and every one here has a need, Father God, and that you will answer them as they give cheerfully. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Awesome job. Thank you. There's the different ways you can give. By the way, you can text the word give to that number. There's a Venmo. Uh, there's Zelle. There's Apple Pay. And, of course, you could give a check as well to Tyco Ground Ministries. And uh, we have pretty much every way if you go to the website, pastortodd.org. Uh, but thank you so much for sewing in to the many things that God is doing. He's doing a new thing. He's doing something very powerful. And uh, let's go ahead and sing a song. Did what? 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good job. Kids, you are dismissed, and uh, kids can go to that corner right over there, and the teachers will pick them up, or you could bring out any babies if you'd like to, that corner over there. We've got a great kids' church, by the way. I mentioned that we need some more teachers, but the ones that we do have are amazing. There's a couple things I wanted to mention before I get into the sermon tonight, but let's just pray first. Lord, we just thank you for this time we get to get into your word. We thank you that you've already met us in such power tonight. And now I pray that you'd speak to our hearts, encourage the hearts in here that have come in heavy laden. I pray that you would let us just be so fired up tonight, Lord, for you, that even though there are things going on that are crazy in this world, Lord, we're in it, but we're not of it. And you are moving around the earth. So we just thank you that we get to be alive in this time and used by you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to just share a few things I was writing down today in my prayer, and then I'll get into the the message. Um, Last week was just very powerful. Coming here, you know, whenever you make a move, it's a risk. Um, We knew that the Lord was saying to move and Uh, We took the risk, and God has just been telling us to really step out of the boat, you know, walk on the water. And so it's that season. uh, That didn't happen overnight. We pastored in California, actually, for many, many years. And uh, about four years ago now, I was driving uh, in Granada Hills, or I think it was Northridge, where the earthquake happened. And the Holy Spirit came in in the car and just said, you're going to be moving. And I had met my wife in California. I wasn't really sure how that was going to go down, because when we got married, she had come from Wisconsin. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and she, I told her, look, I'm called to Hollywood. I was a Hollywood actor. God redeemed it, restored it, and so, you know, we're called here. We had a Bible study in Hollywood. My family was deeply rooted in Hollywood. We had a church there for many years, so we felt that was what God had called us to do, is to minister to that community, and we were right there, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit had a different uh, idea. Did, you're not going to stay here, which Okay, so then he said, you're going to Nashville, Tennessee, and we didn't really know what that meant, but my wife got the same word, my mom got the same word, it was like confirmation after confirmation, God made a way for us to get out here, we got out here, there was a bomb, there was a tornado, and then COVID hit, okay, and then we realized that like a good portion of the church in California was actually moving out here too, (laughs) 
but they vote the right way. I, I just want you to know. Yes. We're not the bad Californians, okay? We're the good Californians. Um, anyways, we, we got much love for what God is doing in Tennessee, but when we got here, we realized, and by the way, I, I speak very, very uh, in fear of God, and, and, and not in any way when I said that there's not a lot of churches in different states. Like, I'm not trying to say, ooh, we're this great church that's on fire. There are many, many churches that are on fire. There are many remnant pastors, thank God. But there are also many dead churches, and that's what I mean by that. And so, you know, it's just something that people say everywhere I go is, is that we, we've been looking, we've been looking. Why aren't they talking about a lot of the things that are going on in our world? You know, if you would go in the service, you would almost think it's like 1999. There's no urgency. How many remember David Wilkerson? You guys remember him? Yeah. How many have, have enjoyed his sermons? You know, the, the man has gone to be with the Lord, but, you know, his sermons today are still fire, right? In fact, they get people saved even today. And they're going viral. We just did a show, Mario Morello and I, you know, and actually, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Mario, don't get mad at me. David Wilkerson's son's going to be our guest uh, in a couple of days. So that'll be kind of cool. And uh, I'm just going to pick his brain. I know Mario is. Mario knew him very well. He was a mentor in his life. And so anyway, you know, we're thankful to men of God that have, and, and women of God that have pa paved the way over the years speaking boldly and operating in the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a way that they didn't care what people thought. They, they weren't afraid to speak the entirety of the Bible. How many know that's so important? They, weren't care, they didn't care about being relevant or because how many know God is always relevant? Uh, they didn't care about being popular. It wasn't about likes or follows. It was because there's a mandate from the Lord to go and make disciples. And if ever there was a time to do that, it's right now. And so I believe what the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord is raising up a standard in this hour. And you are that standard. He is raising up a people of God that are on fire, that believe that he is still in the miracle working business. That he's still able to take somebody out of addiction and get them completely healed without going to rehab. I know that sounds crazy. That he's still able to heal cancer. That he's still able to take somebody who's in a wheelchair and get them up walking. I know this is possible. Now, does it happen every time, all the time? No. And I said this on a live last night. I want to reiterate it. But, you know, I'm going to tell you. And I just saw Kanye West, and they're, they're saying that he went out there and said, well, prayers weren't answered, and so he's turning his back on the Lord. Well, God ain't going to allow that to happen, let me tell you. He's going to go after that guy. Okay, so we got to pray for him. I know there's a lot of people say, I told you he wasn't. Yeah, I get it. He might not have been. He might have been. We don't know because only God knows. But the deal is we got to keep praying for that man. Amen. But one thing I do know is, is that when you get a taste of the Holy Spirit, you don't forget the taste. And God does go. How many, how many was the one that God went after? Were you the one at one point? I was the one. So let's pray for that man to have a true encounter. If he hasn't had a true I don't think he has, but let's pray that he has a true encounter. But listen, I'm going to tell you something, okay? God didn't answer every prayer that I've had. I prayed real hard. There's been times, I remember when I first started pastoring, there was a young man in our group, and he got cancer, and we prayed in tongues every week. We surrounded him, we prayed for him, and he ended up dying. And it was hard, because I said, Lord, why? We did everything that you said. You know, and so this is something that as a pastor I have to deal with. I know you've had to deal with this. Why doesn't God answer the prayers? Somebody said, well, what's the answer? I said, here's the deal. You know that old song, we'll understand it better by and by? We have to ask Jesus when we're in heaven, why did this happen? And he, he, he has a reason. And many of us have lost loved ones, and many of us have been through very painful things in our life. And, I, there, there, you know, I could come up with some fake answer, but the truth is sometimes I don't know. But what I do know is when you close the door and you say, no matter what happens, I'm going to trust God anyway and nothing's going to shake my faith because I'm going to keep pressing ahead no matter what. What happens is that takes away the devil's ability to get you discouraged in your faith. Because just as when I prayed for that man that didn't get healed, I'm going to tell you something. We've seen countless people and the doctors are totally shocked get healed. And so we pray, and we believe in faith, and we do what the Bible says to do, and sometimes he answers, and sometimes he doesn't. But we give him praise anyway. Because guess what? We're not God. And we don't understand all his ways. But we do know is he is good, and he is faithful. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to serve him with all my heart. How many are with me on that? Amen? So that's an important thing that we've got to think about. Now, 
you know, just we had a, a week like totally crazy last week. Uh, it was just unbelievable what God did the first night. Saturday came. I got hit with some warfare. That's expected. It went on throughout the week, but God is faithful. He ended up clearing up all the problems, as he always does, okay? But we got calls from all around the country, and people were saying, what, what in the world? Like, you know, what, what's going on there in Tennessee? And, and pastors were like, you know, how, how, what happened? Like, how did you get the people to come? I said, honestly, it's just the Lord. We, it's nothing to do with us. And one guy came out, and he said, um, he said, well, you finally got what you always wanted. You wanted to, you know, this is what you wanted. And I said, my wife and I were chuckling, and we said, what we wanted, I said, pastor was the last thing I wanted. Can I be real with you? Pastoring is not fun or easy. It's a calling. And I'm just going to be real. Anybody that's out there trying to make it look like it's glamorous or fun and exciting, no, they're, they're not telling you the truth, unless they're not doing what the Bible says to do. Because if you're in the trenches and you're in the war, it is spiritual warfare. How many have been in ministry and you understand what I'm talking about? It's warfare. Now, it's not bad. It's good. Because you get to see amazing things happen in people's lives, and there's a huge reward. But if I could choose, I wouldn't have chose. Like, so I didn't get what I've always wanted. I got what God wanted. Can I make the distinction there? There's, there's enough churches. We don't need another church. There's a church on every corner. There's so many churches. I think there's more churches than, than coffee shops in this city. The last thing we need is another one of the same. What we need in this hour is for the body of Christ to come together and get out the way and stop trying to make a kingdom, but instead start working for the kingdom. How many are with me? I'm no better than you. I sweat. I'm, I'm, my, by the way, how many have a wife that's hot and you're cold? And then when you're cold, they're hot. Does anybody have that happen? It's amazing how that happened. So I'm getting ready for church tonight, and I kid you not, I'm like dripping sweat. And that was, my wife must have turned up the heat. Does that ever happen to anybody in here? Anyway, it's interesting. She comes from Wisconsin. If anybody should have, be able to handle the blizzards. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's all good. But, uh, you know, we're, we're just everyday people that are just trying to do what God called us to do. And I just thank you. I'm extremely humbled that you would come here and that you'd watch online. And, and you know, we just feel like we got to do something. And uh, God has opened a door and an opportunity. And so we're walking through it in faith. And there's a lot of times that we weep and uh, we're just, you know, we were troubled by a lot of the things that are happening in the world, but we also are extremely excited because there's an undercurrent of revival that's happening. And so, uh, you know, I, I just was down at the Sid Roth show and we were just talking about this and, you know, it's like I was really focused on for a while kind of like everything that was going on because how many know that like a lot of people had their heads buried and so they weren't talking about a lot of the stuff. And so, you know, we started talking about this stuff, and many of you started awakening, and, you know, we all kind of, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, back in the day, you'd watch like three news shows, and you just thought that was what was going on in the world. And then one day, it's like the veil was torn. All of a sudden, you start seeing what's actually going on. There's a deep state. There's all this crazy stuff that's going on in our world. You know, they're coming after Christians. How many know what I'm talking about? And then it's like you get so awake that you're up at night, you know, like, oh, my gosh, look what's going on. Look what they're doing to the kids. Look what's all this stuff that's happening. And then you got to kind of, like, go back to, like, even though you know this and you're a watchman and we pray about it and we don't want to be one of these people that has their head buried, on the other side, you don't want to get so into it that this is where you live because you still got to be in the spirit. And just as the enemy's got some things he's trying to do because many of the plans of the wicked, guess what? God is doing something right now. And so I think we've all kind of gone through a little bit of this process in the last couple of years. And so when we started going back into, okay, this is what the Lord is doing, and we started getting in tune with His Spirit and just everything that He's doing. I'm not saying that we weren't before, but just started really just going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's like, I just, now I just feel such a peace. Because even though this stuff is happening, I know that, it, look, we're good either way. If He raptures us out of here tomorrow, we're the best possible scenario that could happen. In the meantime, we, we stand and we do what we're supposed to do as kingdom warriors, right, as remnant warriors. And we pray, we lay hands on the sick, we get people saved and set free and healed and delivered. How many know you can't fix a, 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 you know, a, a problem that is, you know, is a spiritual problem with a chemical solution? You know, when somebody comes to the altar, that's why we have altar services every week, because when somebody comes to the altar, I know for me, the biggest breakthroughs in my life happen at the altar. When I was weeping before the Lord and all of a sudden, like, you know, just undone in his presence and years of brokenness was healed right there and then. And we all got it. We all, you know, but it's like you, you get rid of it, you know, you up and out. Like, I'm not going out of here the same person I came in. 
So, you know, but I've been, you know, as the Lord kind of started expanding the territory and growing the ministry, and I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly in the Christian community. I saw the Christian music industry, which kind of reminds me of when I was in Hollywood. There's not a lot of changes and difference. You know, there's a lot of business, and you know, I'm not against business, but the thing is, is like, are we Christian? Are we about the gospel, or what are we doing here, you know? And it's the same thing, how many know in the ministry? There's some people that have lost their way. And so, anyways, like over the last couple of weeks, it's like, just I want to just share this with you because I want to be very transparent and open, kind of like some of the journey here. And it's like one night, he like wakes me up at like three in the morning, and I was kind of writing some of this down today as I was just praying. And it was like this, just the weight of like a trust that God gives somebody in the ministry. Like, here it is again, trusting somebody with, with the flock and with, the, and with the, the church. After all the people, and I'm telling you, there's these videos online. I don't buy into all of them because a lot of them are heresy hunters and a lot of them exaggerate and things like that. But there have been some pretty crazy scandals even recently in the body. And the thing is, is every time I, I watch it and I read it and I just weep because it's like, you know, Lord, just, you trust us. You know, you trust us with your precious sheep. You trust us with, with, with the, you know, and, and this goes for all of us. We're all ministers in some capacity because our, our call is to go and make disciples. So whether you're a pastor or you're a dentist or wherever it is that God has you ministering, it's like he's trusted us. And it's like that, you just think of the heavens, like, like we're the body of Christ on the earth. And like all these people that have, you know, they, they hear the name Christian and they're like, Oh, Christian, like because somebody's dirtied up that name, you know. And so we've got we to be the change. How in the, I mean, because some people just get so overwhelmed. They say, well, how are we going to do it? Look, all we can do, we can't fix all the other stuff, but what we can do is be authentic and real ourselves. We cannot, we cannot get caught up in this whole celebrity Christianity culture where you think you're better or elitism. Forget all that. It's too late. It's not what's happening. And we don't need another church that does that. Can I be real? So that's not what's going to happen here. And I make that commitment to you because I came from Hollywood, and if I wanted that, I would have stayed in Hollywood and just done it there. Why would I do it in the church? How stupid and pathetic that is. So I don't need to do that. I don't, you know, so when, when the guy said that, it, it brought up a, a plethora of things to my wife and I because she's been through the battle with me too, and she sees the other side of it. And I said, this is what I wanted? No. This is what God called? Yes. Do we have a heart for it? Absolutely. Why? Because we love people, but even more than we love people, we love the Lord. And so the trust, uh, you know, in seeing all the things that have gone down, I know many of you have stories, and you've been places, and look, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't perfect. But one thing I do promise you is I absolutely have a fear of the Lord that is very big, and I love the Lord with all my heart, and I'll just give you a real short thing, and then I'm going to get in the message here. But I got stabbed nine times. It was a Damascus Road encounter for me. I was in my early 20s, and uh, it was when I... To just become a Christian, I was in the church maybe a little over a year, about that, maybe two years. And, and, and so uh, what happened was um, I went back to my old friends because after a few years of being in the church, I hadn't made any Christian friends. And that's because I came from Hollywood and the club scene and totally different crazy world that was so different from Jack Hayford's church at the time, so, which was super conservative and just totally old school. So, you know, I'm like a, I stuck out like a sore thumb there. And, uh, you know, for two years, I tried to make friends. Thank God there was the greeters. The greeters said hi to me. Praise God for greeters. Uh, they were about the only people. There was a couple people, not a lot of people that said hi to me. And so anyway, it was very, I would go there. I would be extremely nervous. Some of you understand what I'm talking about. I'd walk into a church, and I'd feel like a lightning bolt was going to hit me. I felt like I was dirty, and I was unworthy. And I didn't feel like I belonged because I thought, these people are so holy, and here I am. I'm messed up. You know, I, I know I don't belong here. But I knew that I did. But there was just like this, this tug of war. In my, and, you know, so this happens when somebody gets saved. That's why as a church, can we please, when you see somebody that's coming into the, the community here, can we love on them? Can we, I don't care what they look like. Can we love on them? Show them the love of Jesus? Why? Because we're known by our fruit and we're known by our love. And so we got to remember there's people right now, maybe that's you, and I just want you to know I understand. I came from that, and I got it, and I got in the church, and I knew it was real. I knew God was real. I knew he was doing something in my life, but for a, a season, I felt totally out of place. So what happened was I went back to my old friends one night. They had been calling me for like two years, and finally I got weak, and I go back, and I'm going to go hang out with them. And sure enough, that night, I ended up getting a, having a run-in with a guy that was on crystal meth, and uh, he ended up stabbing me once in the heart and then eight more times. 
And it was a total, I literally like just opened a door and like before I even knew what was going on, I'm not saying I was so super innocent, but I opened this door and the next thing you know, this guy just doesn't even know what he's doing. And the next thing you know, he comes to and he realizes, I guess he had a moment of sobriety and I'm on the ground with my sweatshirt. I pull it up. I'm like, bro, you're killing me. Like literally blood. I mean, it was like a movie scene. And so the guy literally picks me up. <laughs> this is so crazy. Picks me up with the girl that he's with screaming over here about this whole, it's like a total movie scene and puts me in the vehicle that for some reason that night I had my mom's SUV. I don't know why, but I did. I'd moved back home with my parents after living a very, uh, you know, lavish life in Hollywood. It was a very humbling thing when I got saved. I, I went from making extremely good money to literally making minimum wage and working out of Macy's. A big, big lifestyle change. So what happened was I had to move home. So I was living with my girlfriend. I had moving home. And so anyway, I'm driving this car, or no, the guy, the guy ends up driving the car with me in the middle. It was an SUV, there was three rows. And he, he put me in the middle, and here I am, you know, on the way to Granada Hills Hospital, literally with the guy that just stabbed me nine times, one in the heart, and he had a girl in the front seat, and, you know, imagine that situation. And on the, on the way to the hospital with this guy driving, he was driving crazy. He was a mad, I mean, he was totally messed up on drugs. So he's all over the road, but, you know, I, I'm not worried about that. I'm bleeding to death, you know. So the only thing that I know is I went into the presence of God, and all of a sudden everything was white. And I heard the audible voice of the Lord, and the Lord said, do you want to live or do you want to die? And I said, I want to live. He says, well, if you live, you've got to be sold out for me and on fire for me for the rest of your life, and you've got to tell people that I'm real. So, you know, it's like Isaiah 6. We talked about it last week if you were here. It's like, what do you do when you're in the presence of God? You're undone. You're, you've had an encounter with the living God. There's nothing else you can do other than what Isaiah said. He said, send me. I'll go. So, no, pastor was not on the, no, it was like the last on my list. But God had different plans. How many know God has different plans sometimes, right? So let me just tell you, this is crazy. So anyways, and I'm not going to go into my whole testimony tonight, but the deal is this, and so... You know, I, after that happened, I wake up, I'm in, the, I'm in the doctor's office at the hospital there. The hospital was literally just about to close down because they were, you know, putting this place, uh, there was a school that was going into the same place. Of the, it was like a skeleton staff. And uh, the guy looks at me and he says, you shouldn't be alive. The nurse looks at me and says, you shouldn't be alive. I knew I shouldn't be alive. And that's a short version of a long story. But I'm going to tell you, what keeps me on fire no matter what is that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is real. He's real. This is the reality of our world. So when you, when you, when you have that type of encounter, I know many of you have, and, and, and I'm not saying you got stabbed, but you've had other things happen in your life to where you've had an encounter with God. When you've had that, there's a fear of the Lord that comes on you. It's not a bad fear. It's a good fear. It's a fear because you know, look, I just want to show up and do whatever God wants me to do. I just want to honor him. And I just want to do his work, Right? And so anyway, that's, that's why we do what we do. It's, it's not, I don't, in fact, like some people say, well, I just, you know, I can't wait till your ministry gets bigger. This not. I don't want it to get bigger because I'm going to tell you there's a lot of drama that comes with having a platform, and it's not fun. People pick you apart, and they, they make videos about you, and they try to destroy you. And thank God that they can't destroy you. That's what's God's because it's not our ministry. But, it, you know, the people, they have the wrong, you know, it's a misconception. So I'm very happy where we are right now, but, you know, whatever God does, he does, and we're just along for the ride. But it's not to try to, like, you know, I just want to make that very clear. Like, we're not trying to, oh, more people or more. Now, obviously, that's what happens when revival happens is that people come. But it's not because of me and, like, my good preaching. What it is is it's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will draw. When there's a people that are hungry for God and they come together with a common purpose in one accord, like Acts chapter 2. Something happens. And this is the problem, and I'm not here to critique other pastors because pastoring is very hard. And I know there's a lot of great, amazing pastors, but what I'm saying is a lot of people have lost the fire. They forgot why they even got into it. And when that happens, how is the church going to be on fire when the, when the shepherd of the church ain't even on fire? So a lot of us got to do some soul searching, right? But... but there's no other answer for our nation than for the body of Christ to rise up for, for, for a revival and a great, great move of God. There's, there's not a political solution. There's not, we will vote. We, we definitely get involved. I, I'm thankful that there are people that are out there that are in that calling and doing different things in that particular sphere of influence, and we support them. And I'm not one of these guys that doesn't talk about it. But I will just tell you, there's not going to be a president that comes in and turns everything around. The only thing that's going to turn this thing around is a great move of God. 
And so how many of you know that this is it? We are here. God didn't make a mistake in bringing us into this city. He didn't make a mistake. And those of you online, wherever you are based out of, that he, is, he is speaking. It's a clarion call to the church right now. Forget, it's, not, it's too late to be trying to build a ministry. It's too late for a church growth seminar. Okay, it's too late for, I was sitting with some pastors. I'll tell you, I was down there, and I, I literally wanted to get out of that room. I was like, I do not, this is boring, boring. There's in well, how do I become more relevant? Well, how can I get on more social media and do it? Well, you got to learn YouTube, and you got to, dude, it's the anointing. You know how you're going to do more for the Lord is spending time in the prayer closet. Because it ain't about us. How many know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Joel 2. Joel 2. So my, my prayer is during the time that we're together, even if you're just visiting one night or if you stay here for a while or whatever the you know, Lord puts on your heart, is that all of us grow in this season and that we get more on fire for God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit, listen, one thing I had to learn a long time ago is with, with church hurt and everything like that is that, you know what, it's a, it's a relationship with God. It's not, man will let you down. People will let you down. Uh, you can't, you can't, you know, not, not that you can't trust people because there's some amazing good people out there, thank God. But the deal is, is that you, you won't be shaken in your faith if you have a personal relationship with God and you spend time in your prayer closet every day. That's the way to do it. If people want to understand how to get the anointing of God, you spend time in his word, in worship, and you spend time in your prayer closet. Amen? That's how it happens. All right, let's go to Joel 2, 28 through 22. And we're going to kind of walk through tonight how God has poured out his spirit. So in verse 28 it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Amen? I mean, we're, we're having this happen right now. There's this uh, eclipse, and I'm not going to get too into it, but it's done this like X over America. How many of you heard about this thing? And it's crazy. It's going over all these cities called Nineveh, which is like, could God be any more, you know, overt in what he's saying? Repent! Right? I mean, seriously, this is all happening. It's, it's, we were just talking before service, Brother Ricky and I, you know, they, they have red heifers in Israel now. They're like building an altar to sacrifice these things. I mean, things are happening fast. I think it's exciting. It's exciting. Because we know that the Lord is coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, but he says in the, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. So there's a lot of people that don't like an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They think it's heretical or they, you know, they, they, there's literally these conferences that people have now where they, they, they have these conferences and all these people come together. It reminds me of the Pharisees. They come together and they talk about what God can't do. So it's a, it's a bunch of pharisaical people that are calling themselves Christians and saying, well, God can't, he can't still move in miracles, signs, and wonders. And these people that say these things, they're crazy. These crazy charismatics, these crazy Pentecostals. And they sit there online and they make a bunch of videos. Could you imagine going to some place where, and maybe some of you have been to some of these places, where they literally tell you what God can't do. This is the God that saved my life from nine stabs. I'm a walking miracle. Don't tell me that miracles aren't happening. They're still happening. But I don't understand how they get past these scriptures because this says so clearly in Joel, it says in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit. I got some news for you. That's where we are right now. There's about 10 people that were excited about that. God is ready. To, why are we we're going to 20 cities just so we can say, hey, I'm going to 20 cities. No, we're going to 20 cities and probably more because every one of those meetings, I kid you not, people are getting saved, set free, healed and delivered, and miracles are happening. 
Mario Murillo and I are going out to Phoenix with a few other folks. Uh, Carrie Lake is going to be there, I think, and uh, Lance Wall now and a few others. And there's going to be a massive tech crusade. Only a week ago, they tried to shut the thing down. And we had to fight. Mario did all the work in his team, but they had to find another venue within a week. Now, praise God, they found the fairgrounds. There's, it's a bigger location. It's a better location, and God provided it within a week's time, which is an absolute miracle. Everywhere we go, there's opposition. I said to Mario, I said, a lot of people would have probably just threw in the towel and said, you know what, forget it, the door closed. But this guy ain't going to do that. I'm going to tell you something about Mario. He ain't going to do that. He, he's gangster. Remember I said it last week. He can say, oh, okay, I'm your huckleberry. And so guess what? He, he went to battle. The intercessors went to battle. Many of you went to battle, and they secured a new spot, and it's going to be much better. And I'm believing this is going to be the most powerful tent crusade he's ever had. Yeah, this is what's happening. So as, as all this wickedness and the wicked plans, and every week, I mean, yesterday, you know, there's this site called the Drudge Report. I think the guy sold out personally. But back in the day, it used to be a good site. Uh, but, you know, it was like, you know, just two days ago, World War III in red, you know. I mean, if you follow the headlines every day, you'll literally go nuts. Every day, it's like some crazy bit, and, you know, and I see a lot of people reacting, reacting. And, you know, what? I realize that, you know, what? I can't react to every one of these things. Because the deal is, as long as we're here and we're able to do the work of the kingdom, we are going to show up. And I don't care the, what the devil's saying, whose report do I believe? I believe the report of the Lord. He says, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. That's the stream we're running in, friends. The pouring out. We just saw a young man come tonight. That was not rehearsed. No one said anything ahead of time. He came up. He gave a scripture. This little young man, we've sat in the room before, and he's told us that God, you know, God's given him visions and dreams. It's happening. If you got your Bible, turn to uh, John 14, 16. John 14, 16. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the progression here. So God gives us, through the prophet Joel, you know, this, this prophecy that in the last days there's going to be a pouring out of his spirit. So anybody that says that's not happening or that's just some charismatic craziness or whatever, no, it's literally right here. I don't know how they get around that. It's right there. And in John 14, 16, Jesus promises another helper. I'm going to start actually in 15, uh, John 14, uh, 15. It says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. It says, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another, a helper, that may be able to abide in you forever. And the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. And I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Joel's prophecy, the event fulfills the prophetic. Here, here's what it does, which Peter cites in his sermon, by the way, in Acts 2. We're not going to go there right now. But Joel prophesied that God would pour out his spirit on all people, indicating a new era of direct personal access to God's presence and power, not limited by race or by anything else. There's, it's not, you know, no matter if you're rich, you're poor, you're old, you're young, there is an availability to plug in to the Spirit. This is Jesus' Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. This is God's Spirit. We are able to, as a, as a Spirit-filled believer, and again, I don't know how you're a believer if you're not Spirit-filled, because the Bible says that the Spirit of God comes and lives in us. He says the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, the body is the temple. So it fulfills Jesus' promise to his disciples that he would send the helper, the Holy Spirit, and it would empower them and teach them and bear witness that this promise that was indicated, the ongoing presence of Jesus with his followers through the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you're taking notes, I'm just going to lead you through a couple of things that, that happens in all this. First of all, there's the birth of the church. What is the church? It's the body, the body of Christ here on earth. And, and through the Holy Spirit, the church is birthed. Okay, so... The arrival of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost is considered the birth of the church. The Spirit's coming demonstrates that the church is not just a human institution. It's very important. It's not a man-made human institution. Is there religion? Yes. Religion is similar to the Pharisees of the days of Jesus. But when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're empowered by his Holy Spirit, that's the actual church. How many know that? Yes, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
We are the church. We're the body. We're the ecclesia. And the Holy Spirit empowers the church. Now listen to this. For its mission in the world. So the Spirit of God empowers us for our mission. Now, the problem is, what I was talking about earlier, is that a lot of the church is not on mission right now. They're not on mission to do what the Spirit of God says to do. They're on another mission. It's a mission similar to the world. It's like a corporation. I worked in a marketing department in a corporation. Let me tell you something. You can market. There can be talent, but the talent can have zero anointing. There's a lot of people that are looking for talent these days. If you're looking for super polished, and for me to get up, you're probably in the wrong place. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not polished. I, I do okay. But you know what? You're going to get raw and all that. But here's the thing. is like you're not going to get that corporate tocracy here. Okay? I promise you that. Okay? The, 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 we are the corporate body in the spirit, but we're not the uh, church that's trying to grow based on like marketing strategies and all that. No. Okay? Because there has to be an anointing. There has to be an anointing. Otherwise, you can't fake the anointing. Okay? You can't fake it. So, so listen, it's the birth of the church. The Holy Spirit empowers the church for its mission in the world, equipping believers with spiritual gifts and enabling us to proclaim the gospel with what? Boldness. Boldness. Who in here is bold? Yeah, we're supposed to be bold. When the apostle Paul went out, it says he went out boldly. How could the guy go to prison but still be happy? How could the guy have all the persecution after? He was the worst persecutor, but then all of a sudden he goes out and becomes this, he has the Damascus Road encounter, and he, he goes out there and he's bold about it even though he is dealing with a, a ton of spiritual warfare. But you didn't hear him saying, oh me, oh my, did you? He found a peace. He, he was able, and I really believe his life is an example for us as end-time warriors to understand how we need to act because it's like we're going to go through it. There's going to be warfare. There's going to be persecution, but we have a peace that passes understanding because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. So there's the birth of the church. Then there's the empowerment for witness. The disciples receive power to witness effectively about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Before Pentecost, they were often confused. They were fearful. They were uncertain. After receiving the Holy Spirit, they preached with boldness, clarity, and conviction, leading to conversions in Acts 2.41. This transformation underscores the Spirit's role in empowering believers for evangelism and ministry. As a believer in Jesus, we, we should have a heart for evangelism. Now, I'm going to be real. There's been seasons as a Christian that I wasn't winning a lot of souls. I'm just going to be honest. I got into churchianity. I got into the Christian culture. And I, I was speaking Christianese. And I was trying to fit in and do whatever the Christian culture told me to do. But the problem is, is I lived in a bubble for that time. And it wasn't until the fire of God really started, you know, I started pressing in, thank God, because I knew that God is real. And when you press in, you draw near to him, he draws near to you. If, if we're not on fire, listen to me, if you're not on fire right now, it's okay. But the deal is make it this season about getting back on fire. And I speak against the spirit of slumber in this place right now in the name of Jesus. I break it right now in Jesus' name. We take authority over that right now. I pray energy, supernatural energy would come on everybody in this room right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, this is important stuff. God is, is speaking to our hearts right now. He wants us, this group is meant to be on fire for God. We're, we're, we're meant to go out and, and change this city and this nation. It is so late right now. This is not a time to be messing around. I know you know that. It is so serious right now. I talked to my friends in the intel community. You know, General Flint's coming out here, I think, next week or the week after. He's going to be talking about a documentary that he's doing. But, you know, I talked to a lot of generals and people like that. And I'm going to tell you something. They all tell me a similar thing. We're in trouble as a country. They say, if you knew the national security issues that we're actually dealing with right now, no one would even be able to sleep. There, were, there was a guy that was a, a, a sheriff, and they had this sheriff's meeting a few weeks back, and all the sheriffs got together, and they said that right now we have more uh, warning signs and red flags than we did before 9-11. The border is open. 
They just flooded. I don't know if you saw the viral video that's around there right now, but people just literally flooded right through. It's all over the world. I use a VPN. How many know what a VPN is? And I can go on to some of Russia's, you know, just to see what TASS and RT is talking about because they banned them here in the United States. But if you, you could use a VPN and go on different places, and I like to just see what different, you know, countries are saying in their news organizations. And they're talking about America, and they're saying it's crazy. It's crazy that they just have the open border, like anybody's coming over. And it is, it is crazy. So we can sit here and just be like, oh my gosh, look what's going on. Or we can do something, and so many of you and many of us want to do something. And so I got involved politically, I was at every rally, I was at different state capitals, and listen, we need to keep doing that stuff. Yes, it was good. I, I saw more of Jesus at some of those state capitals than I did in a lot of churches. I, you know, in the, some of those political rallies, there was more fired up people than I saw in a lot of churches. I'm just being honest. But I also understood that there was a lot of flesh and carnality because there was a missing thing. Now, thank God there's preachers that are there. But a lot of people are saying, well, we need to do this, we need to do that. It's all, and it's a strategy, but it's not the strategy from heaven. And I came to the conclusion through much prayer that there has to be a heart change, and it starts in the church. And so if I have to be somebody sounding the alarm and a voice in the wilderness in, that, in this hour, I'm willing to do that. Because I don't care about popularity. I was already popular in high school. I don't care. As an adult, it doesn't matter to me. Can I just be honest with you? And I'm not saying that pridefully. I'm just saying, like, if I'm trying to be cool right now, I've missed the mark. It ain't about that, okay? I don't care. I really don't. I will go home and I will sleep tonight. But the deal is, is that we have to understand the urgency right now. We can't be tired. We have powerful saints of God that the Lord has assembled both online and in person tonight to come together. you know what this room is capable of doing? you know what could actually happen here tonight if we all got together in prayer? Do you know what could actually, if we came expectant of the Holy Spirit to move in such a new and fresh way and we didn't allow the spirit of slumber and tiredness and complacency and apathy to come on us that's come on the American church, if we came together tonight with an expectancy and started laying hands on each other And believing that God was going to do something new here tonight. Why not? Why could he do it at Azusa but not here in, in Hendersonville? Why did we got to go to a mountaintop on some retreat somewhere to get a move of God? Why can't it be right here, right now? We got to stop waiting for someone else. It's our, it's, this is the time, this is the hour, this is the moment. And that's why we're still here is because God in his mercy and his grace is giving us more time. We don't deserve it. But we were not ready. How many know churches closed down all over this nation? Some of them were closed down for weeks, some of them were closed down for months, some of them were closed down for years. For a flu. Now, I know some of y'all got it bad. I got it bad. But how many know those masks? Have you ever seen the smoke go right through them? <sighs> they didn't do nothing. It was all control to bring in their agenda. They were trying to bring it. And you know who they were focused on? The church. Let's see how these Christians respond and react. Let's see how many of these pastors cave and cower. Let's see how many of these churches will shut their doors while Target is still open. And they're going to do it again. And how many of those same pastors are going to shut down? But God has done something in this time. He's separating the wheat from the chaff. And so I got to a place where I said, either I believe, actually God challenged me with this. He said, hey preacher, do you believe what you preach or not? You talk about laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Do you actually believe that? Because if not, get out the ministry. You're going to shut down your church. You're not going to lay hands on the sick. You're not going to believe what the Bible says. Get out the ministry. What are you doing in the ministry? Get out. But if you're going to be in the ministry, now is go time. So when you wake up in the morning, God, what can I do for you today? It stopped being about me. It stopped being about what I wanted. Look, I'm no better than anybody here, but I'm just saying. 
It can't be. I have some other things. I would have liked to have gone on a few more trips around the world with my precious wife. You know, I would have liked to do some traveling stuff, but God had different plans. We could have been sitting on a beach somewhere. But he said, no. He said, this is the time. This is it. This is, this is like the final, this is the grand finale. And so we can either say, God, why did you bring me in the world at this time? Or we could say, God, you knew what you were doing in bringing me in the world this time. Which one is it? I'm tired. I just want to go, you know, bury myself somewhere under the ground and wait for it all to go down. Well, that's what a lot of elites are doing right now because they don't have the spirit of God. So they're panicked. Even with all their wicked plans and all their money and all their stuff, they're panicked. And you know what? They know that the church has some, some, something different. They're trying to figure the whole thing out. Why is it that these Christians, there, there is a group of Christians that rose up during this whole thing, and they got empowered, and all of a sudden their ministry blew up, and all of a sudden their voice is out. Why? Why is this happening? Why are these things happening? They're trying to figure it all out. They don't understand the anointing. That's why I'm reading this today, is because we have the Holy Spirit of the living God. Are you with me? You guys okay if I go a few more minutes here? So there's a model that happens through this thing. If you want to go to Acts 2.41, Acts 2.41, what happens is a vital church grows. A vital, an empowered church grows out of this thing. In uh, Acts, I'm going to start in Acts 2.40. It says, in many other words, he testified in exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation and those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day 3,000 souls were added unto them. Now, I want to I just look at this, okay? What happened? They, they, were, they were saying, look, I'm, I'm going to come out from among them. I'm going to come out from this wicked and perverse generation. I'm going to be empowered by the Spirit of the living God. I believe this is real. This is the reality of the world. This is what was prophesied. It's now happening. The Spirit of God has come. And then what happened? They showed up, and then guess what? There was 3,000 souls that came to the kingdom. They didn't have Facebook back then. They didn't have Facebook ads. They didn't have emails. They were drawn by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They were drawn by the anointing. They gladly received the word. They were baptized. And that day, 3,000 souls were added to them. Listen to this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread and prayers. And then fear came upon every soul. And listen to this. Listen to this. Those that say, it's not going to happen today. Listen to this. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all these things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had the need. And so continuing daily with one accord to the temple and breaking bread from the house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Wow. Wow. It signifies a new covenant, Pentecost. That's what happened. Where the law of God would be written on the believer's hearts. Where is that found? Jeremiah 31. And they would have a personal relationship with God through what? The Holy Spirit. And this contrasts in the old covenant, which, you know, was mediated through the law and the prophets. The Holy Spirit's indwelling presence in believers is a hallmark of the new covenant. Imagine having the greatest gift of all time you know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He loved the world so much, he gave his son. And then he imparts his Holy Spirit upon us. And, and there's a good portion of us that only use a fraction of what's available. We can literally be in prayer throughout the day and have guidance from the Holy Spirit on everything that we do. It's amazing. We can have divine encounters. We can see people in a Walmart get set free. I know it for a fact. We can see them in a coffee shop. We can see it in our dentist's office. We can see it in the restaurant. What's happened is the modern churchiosity and Christian bubble culture has made it where that it can only happen in a church. And by the way, if it happens in a church, it can only happen within a 10-minute period at the altar, if there is even an altar, because we got to get everybody out of here so that they can go watch football. It's 
So we, how do we, think about how messed up we are, that we have taken the Holy Spirit, which is literally willing to meet us right now tonight in miracle signs and wonders, and we put him in such a box that, I'm look, that I look at a timer and say, okay, worship got to be done 25 minutes after, and then we have announcements for 10 minutes, and then I say a real nice thing, we play a video, and then I preach, and then we got to get everybody out of here in time. And then we wonder why America's in the situation that it's in. It is nothing like what the Bible says. The Bible says with the Holy Spirit, we, we could literally be having, we could be having like a straight up great awakening here right now tonight. Somebody that's been walking in ailments for 30 plus years could come up and get delivered and set free tonight. Oh, but I don't want to be the first person to come up because it's embarrassing. Oh, Really? You don't want a big breakthrough in your life that's going to forever change every single part of your life? It's not for me. It's not for the cameras or who's watching online. This is a personal thing. Do we want it or not? Do we believe when, when, the, when the, the woman with the issue of blood, like, what did she, she do? She just touched. Boom. I haven't seen such faith in anyone in all Judea and Samaria. What is God looking for? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. See, when we box the Holy Spirit so much, we don't let him move. And that's why we're here as a remnant. People say, what is the remnant? A remnant is folks that are willing to come to the altar, that have a hunger and thirst for the Bible, for righteousness, that we're willing to preach and teach the entire Bible, that we want to actually do what Christ says to do. There's no, like, mystery, like, what is the remnant? It's not that group that was on HBO that was down there in Lower Tennessee or whatever. Many people ask me about that. No, we have no, no affiliation with those people. They're a cult. The remnant is simple. It's people that hunger and thirst for God. It's people that love the Word of God. I wasn't going to change the name of the group just because some group messed it up. People say, you got to change it because of that group. No. We've had the remnant for over 20 years now, so I'm sorry. The devil is trying to mess up the remnant name. We're not going to bow down to that. People will figure it out. Y'all figured it out, right? People ask me like every week, are you part of the group? No, we're not. We pray for them. I don't hate them, but I did see they did some weird stuff. If I'm wrong, I repent, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they did. But the deal is the remnant are people that hunger and thirst for righteousness. We're in an hour where it's late. God is real. His spirit is real. He's available to us. I, I expect that when we come together and we gather that we stop trying to look. I'm, can I just be completely real? Because I, I, Like we're not trying to be cool and get into like some Christian culture where we're showing off to one another. I don't even care about that. Does anybody care about that? I don't care about that. Some elite version of Christianity where you got like some really expensive shirt and boots and clothes and everything's got your name on it. And everything. I don't care about that. I'm not making fun of anybody. If that's what they do, that's their thing. But when we come together, what I hope that this group would want to do is be real. And get on our faces before a holy God and repent for this nation. And cry out to God. Because otherwise none of us need to come. If we're just going to come together and be another church, we might as well just not even gather. Either we come here expectant that there's going to be miracles, that there's going to be 3,000. How many want 3,000 people from this area to come in those doors? We don't, we don't tithe and, and do all these things just to have a pretty building so we can have cameras and everything. We're, look, we want people to come in and have a life-altering experience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Otherwise, forget it. And I know some people are going to be mad at me tonight. But it's like either this is why we're here or we're not. It isn't about trying to be cool. It's like God is real. We're in a dire situation in our country. There's only one hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. There's a remnant that's still alive, that's still a praying group, that has authority, that's filled with the Holy Spirit, that's still here, and by golly, we're going to come together and do what we're called to do. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church.
Scripture 5, Isaiah 31, 31. I'm just going to read it real quick. It says, until the Spirit is poured upon us all from high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This goes way back. This thing's been planted for a long time. The commentary on that is this passage symbolizes the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. Just as rain turns a desert into fertile land, the Holy Spirit revitalizes our spiritual wilderness. The transformation signifies growth, life, abundance in all areas of our lives that were once barren. Somebody said, well, they're doing this digital currency and all this stuff's going on. What are you doing? I said, you know what? I'm trying to prepare the best that I can, but at the end of the day, I know that my God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I know that we're in God's economy. We're not in the world's economy. He's going to provide just like he takes care of the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. And I believe many of you in this room are going to have your most fruitful financial season in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you're making it about kingdom business. We're not going to be shaken by, a, by an economy that's titter-tattering. It doesn't matter. You're going to prosper. Because you're about the kingdom business. How many receive that in here? Why not? Why can't you? Oh, you know, I I see people that like, they they get ashamed that God has blessed them. Why? Why are you ashamed that God has blessed you? Wear your coat. Joseph wore his coat. Sometimes this is the culture. Now, I'm not saying be abusive or do something stupid or make it about money, but I'm just saying, what, why have we caved into this whole pressure from the Christian world? It's all to keep us in a box. The healings, we can't do healings. Why? Why can't we do healing? Oh, well, you know, God's not doing healings anymore. Who said? Who said that? I didn't read that. Are you with me? See, I've never been to a church service like this before. <laughs> Scripture 7, Isaiah 32, 17 through 18. The work of the righteous will be at peace, and the effort of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation. Hallelujah. Let me just say this. There's, there's a cleansing that's been going on. You don't have to turn there, but Acts 2, 37 This is the first act of what the Holy Spirit does. He cleanses. The conviction of the Holy Spirit comes upon people. We start searching our own heart. Repentance starts taking place. We've got to repent. They took out repentance. They took out the blood of Jesus. They took out the cross of Calvary. And then they took out miracles. Well, then what do we have left? And they said, you don't even have the Holy Spirit. That all died with the last apostle. Really? I mean, so what do we have then? The Bible says completely different. And the empowered Christian is the, is the enemy's biggest nightmare. But there has to be a cleansing. And so that's the period that we're in right now. And then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then, then the Holy Spirit starts dealing with the individual. He starts speaking to us in our, in our dreams, in our visions, in our alone time. He starts waking us up at 3 in the morning and convicting our hearts. When we have an encounter with God, there's a process that happens. When you start getting empowered with the Spirit, first of all, you see the Lord's tangible presence in your life. He does a heart thing. He starts healing the brokenness and the wounds. He starts showing you the actual thing that He wants you to do. Then He starts cleansing your life. Then you start coming out from among the evil and all the Babylon system. And He starts awakening and you start seeing through the eyes of the Spirit. And all of a sudden, your whole life is impacted. Listen, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a completely transformative process. You don't look the same. You don't act the same. You can't go back to the old version of you. It's done. It's finished in your life. Depression can't come on you because when it tries to, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Sickness. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. This may sound controversial, but when sickness comes on your body, you can rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. So many times I've seen it happen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's just excited. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's that's good. 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 No more now. That's good. Okay. Yeah, please. I understand. I understand. I understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay. That's okay. She's just on fire for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We've been to meetings all over the world and country where you should see what some people do. It's okay. Hallelujah. We love them. She's just on fire for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray right now. Just pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like it's a pivotal time. If I can have somebody go up on the keyboard right now. It's just a pivotal time right now. I feel like we're, we're in a real pivotal time for our country. Come on, intercessors. Pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Rombo shinda rabaka soto robo do do bo shinda rabaka. Rondo do 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 bo shinda rabaka sita rada. Hallelujah. She's just travailing and weeping for the church. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rumbo shin da 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 I want you to, if you're in this room and there's been sickness that's been coming on your body, I want you to stand up right now. We're going to pray for you. Sickness has been coming on your body. Jesus. I believe there's been an assignment of the enemy on a lot of saints to keep you tired and beat down from sickness. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands right now. In Jesus' name. I just declare healing. According to your word, you said that by your stripes we are healed. You said that we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And we believe it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, healing, healing over these bodies. Healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Healing in Jesus' name. Mm, healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Healing in the name of Jesus. 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 From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Right now. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Healing in the name of Jesus. Right now. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Rombo robosi. Rondo robo rabakaso. Thank you, God. 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 Every bit of hurt that is in this man right now, I pray in Jesus' name, he feels your love all over him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Complete, complete healing. It is a new day for you, my friend. It was a battle for you to get here. 
but you walked in here and you wondered if God was going to recognize you and God saw you and said he called you by name. Your life is not going to be the same. They try to take you down too many times, but God spared your life because he has something for you. In the name of Jesus, you are welcome here, my friend. You are welcome here. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this man. He feels your presence right now all over him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are loved. I just want you to know that, bro. You're loved by God so much. You are loved by God so much. The devil's tried to make you feel like you're not. You got so much love from the Lord. He spared you. Just think about what he did for you. He kept you all those times. He kept you so that you could be here today. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for this man of God. You're going to turn around what the devil meant for evil in his life. You're going to make it a story of your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm, Here's what we're going to do. Those of you that felt a touch of the Holy Spirit tonight, I know there's many folks in here that are tired. Y'all probably worked hard this week. You want to get home. But I don't think I've ever preached the message like I did today because I literally just said either I do everything that you said tonight or I go home. We're not trying to build another church. I'm just telling you right now, we're not. This is a clarion call. We're in this together. This nation is savable, but we got to get serious. If the Holy Spirit spoke to you, I want you to come up right now. I want us to intercede for America. I want us to intercede for Hendersonville. If you got to call the Lord tonight on your spirit, you felt something different, just come up. Look, we're not going to stay long. But we need to start crying out. We're not playing church anymore. I'm not playing church. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. We are interceding for Hendersonville, Tennessee, for Gallatin, Tennessee. We're interceding for Sumner County, for Wilson County, for Mount Juliet, for Madison, for for Goodlettsville, for Nashville proper, for Franklin, for all of it, Lord. This city, this territory, the principalities here, there is a remnant that you have raised up. Those of you online, start praying for your city right now. We are not playing church. We are not playing. We're not trying to be cool. We're not trying to be popular. We're not trying to fit into a culture. This is the church victorious. We're believing for miracles in this city. We're believing for miracles around this country. We're believing for God to do one more round in America. We need to be intercessors. Come on, pray, pray. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rombo shindarabakasi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We intercede for the young people. How many here got somebody who's a loved one that you're calling out of darkness right now in Jesus' name? Yeah. Look, if you don't want to come up, can you at least stand right now? Can you do that? Can you stand in this church? God is calling us to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. If not now, when? If not, who? Not, not, you know, us who? If not here, where? When, when are we going to do it? When are we going to do what the Bible says? When are we going to believe what it says? Are we going to believe it or not? Is it going to take a stabbing? Is it going to take a nuclear bomb going off in New York City? Is it going to take our water supply being completely destroyed? What's it going to take? What if we knew what was actually coming down the pike tonight? Would we be doing what we're doing now? Would we be crying out to God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, send revival in this land, Lord. Send a great move of your Holy Spirit, please. 
Spare our kids, God. We repent to you right now for everything that we've made it that was never you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We've got to come to the end of ourself. We've got to come to the end of ourself. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We've got to open the altars again. We've got to have prayer meetings. We've got to pray and lay hands on the sick. We've got to talk about repentance in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We've got to believe it in our heart that God hears our prayers. Mm, let us not be apathetic, Lord. Let us not be complacent. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Every bit of church hurt, I pray, would be a race right now in this room. Every single bit of it, Lord. Everybody online that's been church hurt, I pray it's gone, it's done. I pray right now we forgive at this altar. I pray we forgive right now in Jesus' name, everybody that's hurt us. Not for them, for us, for you. I pray that, that marriages would be restored right now in this place. We don't just gather to put on a show. We don't gather for entertainment. We come into your presence. Holy is your name. Worthy is your name. Keep praying, keep praying. Rondo no 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 motion, da 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 ba 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 sha da da da. Rondo no 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 motion, da 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 ba ba da da ba ba ba. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. If you're praying for a prodigal, you're praying for your child. Come up right now. Come up and start praying for him. There's going to be a breaking that's going to happen right now. I'm telling you right now. You're praying for a family member, a loved one, someone in your life. Listen, God is going to respond to the prayers of the righteous in here. It starts now. It starts at the altar. It starts at the foot of the cross. Jesus, touch our hearts. Touch our hearts, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're praying for a spouse. You've been single and you've been praying and God is about to break something in that situation. Come up. Come up and put the spouse on the foot of the cross. God, you're about to bring a godly man. God, you're about to bring a godly woman. Some of you have been hurt in past relationships and you've been closing off your heart and God says tonight it's opening back up, back up to the right man. To the right woman. When he says, I'll pour out my spirit, he's going to pour out his spirit. That's what he's doing. Pour it out, God. Pour it out. You say, Pastor, I've never been able to speak in tongues. I believe tonight is the night. Don't worry about what they say. Right now, somebody's getting the gift of a spiritual language. Just start speaking it out. Thank you, God. Thank you for the gift of a spiritual language in here. You are birthing ministries right now at this altar. Ministries are being birthed right now at this altar. We've got to come to the end of ourselves. Our ambitions, our vain imaginations, we lay them down. We lay them down right now. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Jesus. Jesus. We call upon your name. The name above all names. Start praying for these next couple months. They got all kinds of wicked plans. They got all kinds of wicked plans. We break the assignment of hell for America in Jesus' name. We break the assignment of hell over this nation. This is the devil's worst nightmare. Is a praying church. You want to know what keeps the devil up? I'm telling you right now, it's this. Start pressing in. We pray for America. There's been a lot of doom and gloom spoke over this place. But in Jesus' name, the church says no. No to the plans of the enemy. 
no to the foul assignment of hell. You say in your word, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. As long as the church is here, there is an opposition to the forces of darkness. Some of you have been hopeless over your family. I feel like a hopelessness over a family situation. You've been praying and you've been asking God, but it doesn't seem like he's answered. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God is responding to your prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You say, well, this preacher's on fire, but I don't know what he's talking about. Listen, friend, I'm telling you, this is real. God is real. He wants to meet you just like He's met us. He wants to change your situation. He wants to change your life. It's not a mistake that you've come here tonight. I don't care if you don't even remember my name. It has no... It's not about that. Tonight you encounter God. Tonight you encounter His Spirit. Oh, I've done that before. Well, that's good. Praise God. But we all need to do it. He says, die to our flesh daily. Encounter him tonight. Encounter him. Encounter him right now. Jesus. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Fall on me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Anointing fall on me, anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, Holy Spirit fall on me. It's a holy moment, just press in. Fall on me, sing it out, anointing. Fall on me, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, right now, many of you are getting a fresh anointing in this place. There's a fresh fire falling upon you. Just press in right now. It's happening right now at this. At this Fall altar, fresh fire, me. fresh fire, anointing. Oh, let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Oh, anointing. He's separating the wheat from the tares right now. Sing it out. Anointing, fall on me. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. One more time, sing it out. Anointing, fresh fire, fresh fire. fall on me. Anointing. Listen, just stay in that attitude of praise right now. Everybody that's in this room right now is a hungry person. Now, I don't know why. Some people had to leave a few minutes ago. Maybe they had to get home to their child or whatever. But I'm going to tell you as we go around the country in different meetings, there's always folks that the Spirit of God will be moving so powerfully and they will walk out as if nothing's happening. I'm going to tell you, for a long time that bothered me. But what I realize is that no matter what, there's always going to be people that are hungry for the Spirit of God, and there's always going to be people that decide they don't want it. It happened even in the ministry of Jesus himself. But what's happening right now is that God is preparing his body. You are his body, okay? And there's a fresh fire and a fresh anointing that's coming upon you because many of you have been weary and heavy laden. We named a bunch of different things in the service today. Some of you, it's a marriage that you went through. 
Some of you, it's your child that you've been praying for that's been in rebellion. You've been in an abusive relationship. You've been church hurt. You've had a pastor that let you down. Whatever it is. And now we're at that precious holy moment at the altar where the Spirit of God is moving. And here's what's happening. I want to just paint this picture in the Spirit. That wound is being healed up right now. When I came in tonight and we got out of the worship, I saw a picture of oil being poured down. And the Spirit of God said, you need to go for it with everything that you got tonight and not worry one bit about what people think. I don't know if I've ever preached a message like tonight. There could be fear that comes on me. It says, you preach the message that people aren't going to come back. You preach the message where people are going to be mad at you. But I'm going to tell you, I've come to the end of myself. Because I've come to a point in the ministry where I have to obey God. Because if I don't obey God, i got to go home. I want you to know about a personal journey that I've been on. I had to come to the end of myself. Because if we're going to go forward, we have to. I could go out and get a different job. We all could. Either we obey God and we go forward in what He says or we go home. It had to come to this pivotal moment. And the warfare this week has been the worst I've ever dealt with in my life. And I've dealt with some pretty hard warfare before. But this week, God took me to the chopping block. You could have sat and said, last week was great. It was so awesome. All these people showed up and it was so powerful. But God said, you got to lay everything on the altar. Because that's not what this is about. Either you obey me or you go home. (laughs) I can't express to you the urgency that I have for this country. I can't express to you the countless nights of being up awake and just feeling all the hurt from so many saints that have had a pastor let them down. (laughs) I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for all this stuff that's happened in American Christianity. And we're not better than anybody, but I'm just saying if we don't come to the end of ourselves, we're going to have the same thing happen over and over, and that's literally the definition of insanity. So either we believe what we say that we believe, or we all go home. So you know what? A few people left. God bless them. I'm not going to make fun of them. I don't know why they had to leave, but you know what? You're here. You endured preaching that was hard because you have a heart for God and I just pray blessing over you right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you thank you I'm sorry I just it's been inside of me for so long this heaviness we don't need another entertainment church Either we are real or we go home. That's the way I think God is saying it right now. But here's the thing. If we do do what he wants us to do, and we do it right, he's going to pour out. He's going to pour out so powerfully. He's going to bring prodigals through here. Some of them are going to come fresh from the marijuana dispensary. Some some of them are going to come in here drunk. Hear me. Some of them are going to come in with pink hair, tattoos all over. We've got to show them love, and we've got to get them on fire for God. The people right now that are the drug addicts and the misfits are literally the next generation of end-time preachers. He's tired of the perfect None of us are perfect. He wants those who hunger for Him. Something shifted. How many have felt a shift at this altar tonight? It's a shift that happened. I'm going to tell you guys, I, I have pressure. When I speak on a big stage or something, there's pressure to come with some dynamic message and all this stuff. There's pressure for preachers. They tell you, you got to do this, you got to do that. 
I have refused to go under that pressure because I don't want that. If I do that, I sell out. Just love you guys. And God loves you more than I love you. So listen, next week, we're gonna, I want to just stay at the altar. I don't want to quench the spirit right now. We need to hang here for a few minutes. But we need to become soul winners in this church, okay? We got we to gotta impact the city. We got to get the unchurched people in here. We got to tell them the good news. There's some people that literally are going to be pulled out of a death spiral. And, and they're going to be put into a whole other direction. And some of you in this room know exactly what that is because God did it with you. The devil always has a plan. He had a plan for me. His plan was for me to be stabbed that night and die. But you know what? God knew that I was going to say yes. That's the only thing he knew. He knew it all, of course. But what I'm saying is he knew I was going to say yes. That's all he needed to know. He just wants us to say yes to him. He's always been looking for a people that will trust him. This, this, this church and this online community is special. We've got we've to do what God's called us to do. We can't get messed up by all this other stuff that's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just press in for a few more minutes and we'll let you go. But I just think this is a holy moment right now. Things are shifting in Hendersonville. They're shifting in Nashville. You know that they're calling Nashville Nash, Nash Vegas now. They're trying to turn this city into another Hollywood, another Las Vegas. This is the buckle on the Bible. But why has he converged powerful warriors from all over the country? Ex-NYPD. He's brought people here from all over the country to converge on a city where I believe there's an open heaven. Where, listen, we're not the first choice. He's ready to pour out. He wants to pour out. He's been waiting to pour out. He's been waiting for us to get out of the way. The devil is not going to have this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, just praise him, church. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. The devil is so afraid of a praying church. He's so afraid of a praying church. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rombo moshin da 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 ba ba. Hallelujah, rombo koshin da 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 ba. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, now I pray in the name of Jesus that every foul assignment of hell that's been over every single person in this room, every foul assignment of hell is broken right now. That tonight, Lord God, there'd be such a freedom that everybody that leaves here tonight would feel such a freedom, such a refreshing in their spirit, Lord God. It really begins when we leave here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Such a fresh anointing of your spirit. Such a fresh presence of your spirit. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I thank you, my sister, for your heart. I thank you for your heart. Thank you that you are on fire for Jesus. He's going to use you in a mighty and powerful way. You pressed through through some very tough things. God is saying, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I'm going to do something new and something fresh in your life. Hallelujah. They tried to take you down a couple of times. Accusations, foul, evil, horrible accusations. Hallelujah. But God kept you. He kept you. He kept you. He kept you. And now he's restoring what the vultures have tried to steal. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Pour out your spirit in this territory, Lord God. Thank you for this man of God that you called from the L.A. Sheriff's Department to come out here. Take a stand for righteousness, Lord. 
Thank you for this man of integrity. You're going to use him more in this season than you've ever used him before. He's had a successful career, but God says, watch out what's about to happen. Watch out, because nothing you have been through will be wasted. Hallelujah. He's bringing a warrior class, a warrior class in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fresh anointing. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. You carry a message. And the Lord is going to anoint that message, my sister. He's going to start really honing in on what it is that you're called to do. It's, it's happening already. Clarity and direction in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise your name. She is willing. She is willing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you for this man of God. Thank you for this man of God's heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're calling elders. You're calling elders in this hour to speak truth. You're raising up the fathers. Thank you for the fathers, Lord. We need the fathers. You're raising up spiritual grandfathers and fathers of the faith. In Jesus' name. You have a real pure heart, my brother. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Lorraine, do you have a word the Lord put on your heart at all? Only if you have one. If you could join me as we pray over this state. I felt the Holy Spirit saying that we need to pray for a wall of fire around the state of Tennessee. That the word that has been sown in the ground in this territory is going to start to take root. And there is going to be fresh fire from the Spirit of God falling upon this state. And that's why he's imported so many people from other states in the country because there is a Holy Ghost fire already starting. And it's not just here, it's around the state. But we do need to realize there's an assignment of the enemy. And the enemy has put his hand in almost every pot in this state in education, in government, in business. And we need to be more astute than ever before. We need to be watchmen on the wall. So, Father, I pray for everyone in this place who's anointed as a watchman on the wall. Lord, you have not put us on the wall to be complacent, to be downhearted, to be depressed, You've put us on the wall to set a fire on that wall. And we pray for the wall of fire of the Spirit of God to surround the state of Tennessee in the name of Jesus. We pray for that same wall of fire around Nashville. Nashville is on God's heart. That's why we're here. That's why we came. That's why you came. We didn't know why we were coming. We came because the Spirit of God said, go. And we're like, go and do what, Lord? What do you want us to do? This is what he wants us to do. He wants us to spend time at the feet of Jesus and weep at his feet and trust him in a way we've never trusted him. Thank you. Thank you for serving God. Thank you for coming to the altar and weeping before the altar. Thank you for crying out, crying out while he may be found. God may be found now. Cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. Come on. Lift your voices. Lift your voices before the Lord and cry out that he would spare us 
He would spare us from the assignments of hell that are already strategized. They're already strategized. And the Lord wants his people to take authority and break these hellish assignments over our children, over our families, over our churches, over our territories. In Jesus' holy name. So as, as Pastor Todd was praying over people, I like sat down and I closed my eyes and I could see Jesus pacing. He's, he is absolutely here. But he, is, he was pacing here because he was ready to make a move with us. And the important thing that he put on my heart was that he is ready to make a move with us because there's no pretense here. He does not have time anymore for pretense. He wants our honest and genuine hearts and it's going to make people not like us. But that's okay. It's absolutely okay because they can't like us. They hate, if they hated him, they're going to hate us because we are his representatives, right? But he is here and he is ready to make a move with us because our hearts are honest and genuine. Amen, amen, amen. It starts tonight. Something shifted tonight. Thank you, Lord. Just stay in his presence for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fresh fire. We love you so much, God. We just stand in awe of you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him a praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Here's what we're going to do. The altars are going to remain open. Lance is going to continue to pray. We're going to pray for anybody that needs prayer. 
please be praying. Something shifted here tonight. It needed to happen because we were headed in a trajectory where it was like that same pressure to be another church that grows and this and that. And this growth is good. But the deal is we've got to grow in accordance to the Spirit of God. And so he's raising up a standard and he's bringing his remnant together. Some people is not going to be for them. But it's going to be for those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I'm going to tell you right now, not only are you going to see it in your life, but you're going to see it in what happens here in this city. Transformation. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, transformation happens. So next week, we're going to do an outreach. Sunday night at 6 o'clock. It's an outreach. Many of you raised your hand. You said you're going to come. Okay, but here's the deal. We're going to outreach to this city. And we're going to bring folks that are unchurched. And we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to move on them. And I want you to see what God does. Not because of me. It's not at all. It's all of us collectively obeying the call of God to make disciples of the nation. And we're going to start in our hometown or wherever you're coming from in this area. And those of you online, you can do this wherever you're at too. We're going to make disciples and we're going to watch the transformation of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in their lives. And God is going to change some things. There's going to be a difference. Something because otherwise... It's just another coffee shop. It's just another church. How many want to be the the church of Jesus Christ? Amen. Did you feel the presence of God in here tonight? How many felt the presence of God? Hallelujah. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord. Thank you for your heart and for bearing with us. We just want to get out of the way and let God move. I pray blessing over everybody in here. What you did at this altar and what you did in our hearts, I pray you'd seal it now. In Jesus' name, we speak against any retaliation of the enemy. And I pray if anybody needs prayer, they'd come up. And we pray next week for a great harvest of souls. I pray that many, many people would come to know Jesus next weekend. It's Resurrection Day. And Lord, I believe there are many people in this city that are coming to know you. And so we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Bless you. If you need prayer, come up. Stay as long as you want. We'll be here.